right then. So, TT. This is the one that should have won the race, but came second. The only thing we've done with this since we got back was test fit one of the rear struts, which it fits. So all the struts are here now. So we're going to get them fitted. While Jake's messing about with that, I'm going to take advantage that it's not outside in what I can only describe as summer, autumn, winter, spring, all in like an hour. So I'm not doing it outside because it looks good now, but it will snow on me at some point. So I'll take them stickers off. Help him do what he needs to do with that, if I can help at all. I've got some bits out for him, so I feel like I've helped him. Um, and then I think just got a few little bits of servicing and stuff like that to do. Swap the tyres around to the tyres that we're going to actually be racing on. And then we're ready to, or testing on, which I think we'll probably just leave these on for the first test. Um, then yeah, we should be ready for the testing at Donington in a few weeks. So suspension wise, these are coming off these top mounts and then these struts which you can see here they don't fit very right good but these are the um, KWs which came on our Mark 5 slash 6 Golf when we got it they were just temporary because we didn't have any others but the Bill Steins are here now so yeah so these are made in England to our spec so these are pretty much the Golf specification all the valving and everything preset so we can just click these to the same damper clicks as the golf like that oh click 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 red's rebound blue's bump rb easy to remember got everything that we need on there so thank you to lewis for sorting them out for us really happy nice top mounts to go on there so we'll get them on rear ones these are like super short and they've got like i think i can squash them i'm not strong enough Oh, I'm not strong enough. They're, yeah, it's not good, that is it. I'm doing it now. I can do it. That's how much bump travel we've got. So literally, that is it. We've not got a lot of bump travel, but that's because we've not got a lot of droop. Even though these are custom made, you're still limited on something this small, how much bump travel you can have. I'd like more, but it'll work. So these are the, they're even rubbing off in boxes. So these are the back springs that are going on, 120 Newtons. Pretty stiff, not ridiculously, not as stiff as the Golf. The rear is not as stiff, just because of the less weight, lower centre of gravity, we thought we'll go 10 newtons less on this car, which should work. The other car, we're going, I think we're going to go the same as the Golf for a bit of a difference in the, um, in the rating, but we've got loads of different springs. We're going to take them all with us, and then by the end of the next test day, we should have both cars sprung how we want them, see how we get on. What else are we doing? All right, so we're going to end up with the KW's left over with the top mounts. If anyone wants to buy them. Yeah, if anyone wants to buy them. Which these ones are VW Cup spec, so they've got... I'll show you when we've got them off anyway, but they work. And then these are the Moton fronts, but these have not got the top mounts with them because they're still on, so I'm going to take them off. The rear shocks are still on, I'm going to take them off, and then that'll be a full set of Motons, which these look a bit grubby, and I think this one... I think it's come loose a bit. I think that will weird as problem, was, Jake. I don't know if you took that off there. No. But yeah, so it looks like. Do not open. Yeah, do not open. So. Want to rebuild. Yeah, I think these want to rebuild anyway. At least checking the motor. But I think these were like six and a half grand or something like that. New. We have got two sets. Yeah, we've got two sets of them. Jake is a salesman. Um, so there'll be two sets of them for so sale. Me. Yeah, front set of them. We'll sort all that out later on. So yeah, we'll get these fitted. Watch Jake building them, get them all set up, get the corner where it's done if we get chance, and then probably just an alignment when we've got time, so wish us luck. Jake got the suspension sorted on this. That was last week now, but as far as you're concerned, it was a few seconds ago. 
still not a chance to corner weight it and do the alignment, but what we decided to do, we'll get the next thing, and it should be the last thing that this one needs, other than running repairs and checks and stuff. But basically, last time we were out at Silverstone, we had a load of trouble with fuel surge, as did everybody with sort of Mark 7 platform cars, all the guys that we were sort of racing against, stuff like that, even when they got like 25 and 30 litres of fuel in, which were down to just right-handers and the, the fuel all sloshing this way. And they, but they had oversized tanks, so it wouldn't have hurt them as much as it hurt us. So we decided after that weekend, we needed to get it sorted sooner rather than later. So we're going to Pro, Pro Alloy and straight away, they got us these sent out to our spec, so it's they're pretty much off the shelf size tank, which means they've got these on the shelf, which is like a, a base plate for this to sit on, which goes in here. Just put it in. I can't remember which way it came out. I think it's this way. Paul's just welded into his nice new paintwork here. There, there. So you're just gonna weld the last one in there. So that goes there and the tank mounts to that. But now that's not gonna be FIA compliant if you've got a fuel tank just sat behind the driver. So what we have to do then is bund it. So this tank, 54 litres I think it is with a foam inside, which there you go, this foam, you can see the foam inside it there. So that's to stop it all sloshing around. And then you've got your vents and your returns and all that sort of stuff, which we're not having a return going to this because these are returnless fuel systems anyway. So we're going to plug that and then the vent, that's going to have to get piped to the outside of the car. And then this is what is normally... Oh, can't get it out here. This is what's normally the, um, the pumped feed. Um, but we're doing things a little bit differently. So what we're going to do with that, that's going to go to a dry brake connector next to the fuel in system, next to the fuel sort of cap. And that's going to have a dry brake that goes to the tough jugs, which then lets the tough jugs breathe, which we'll demonstrate that later on, you'll see. Um, so we've got that sorted. So all the fittings are here. These are going to get all sorted. There's one of everything there. So how this is going to work, we're going to have that coming... Oh, I'll oh, put in a fuel filter in as well. But we're going to have that coming off the bottom of the tank here, which is why it's set on there. So that's going to come off the bottom there. Gravity feed into, where is it? This bulkhead connector, which is going to be just in the top hat of the fuel sender, and it'll drop straight into the, into the sort of little bucket that keeps full, even though your tank might have half an inch of fuel, 10 mil of fuel in it, the, the sort of swirl pot in the tank sort of tries to keep full, but obviously we're having problems with that. So this will be dropping straight into there, hopefully. All them fittings are what we need to do with that, little blanking plugs and stuff. Anyway, forget about them. There's enough fittings to do both cars, that's what's there, and some spares as well. So that's the pipe. Some of it's going to be Teflon, some of it's going to be rubber like that. There, the brackets hold that round there. So that's why I went for their standard off the shelf size tank and then got it the bits well done that we needed. Now, this is something that we've had to make. So Rob did a bit of 3D scanning on the car, which we'll try and put the footage in for that. Right, fuel tanks have arrived for the TTs. We need to make uh, an enclosure in this area. Um, it's a prime opportunity to use a fuel 3D scanner. So let's see how we get on. That turned out to be a load of rubbish. 
because it didn't help us at all, I don't think. Or at least I can't see how it helped us because what we're going to have to do now, when I can get this off, so we're going to have to turn this into a box like this that goes around the tank. It's not going to stand up. But... This is going to go up like that and then we can still have access. Look at that. He's not just a cameraman. He's got many more uses. So these are oversized because the idea of the 3D scanning was to get the profile for these side pieces because if you'll see when we get it done, the, the, where the seats are is a funny shape and we've got to get a seal around the bottom of this and then we've got to get a seal. Oh, that one's stuck in as well. We've got to put a seal on that and then basically a seal around that and that seals everything off, everything. There's no way if this, this tank had a leak, it could get inside the car. So that's the idea, in theory. So we'll leave Paul to play about. I'm not sure if he's gonna be recording everything he's doing because he might stress him out a bit more than he already is. But we'll get there and uh, see what happens. So I weren't planning on doing this video at this point, but might as well while I'm here. I'd say while it's quiet, but it's not quiet. So. Paul's got all the tank and everything all in, sorted, piped up now. We are having a little issue with a seal on the sender when it's decided to start leaking. So if you're doing this kind of thing, just buy a new one of them. It's not worth hassle. This back part, we're just waiting for it to come because we, we ended up with two fronts rather than a front and a back somehow. So we need to sort that and then we just need to put the trim edging on so that it's not, um, so it's sealed basically. So that's pretty much nearly sorted. So if people are wondering what this was, so this is where, this is the cap. Not the easiest thing to get out of that, I think, when you've got gloves on, which is what you're meant to have. But the idea with this is here, which I can use this while it's empty. You put this on here. This is a dry break connector. You push that on there, it just pushes on and goes on. And then we put that into there. And in theory, when we shove that in there, as you're pushing the fuel in, the air is breathing out, out of the tank, coming through here and pushing it back in. So this should make these quicker. So maybe we'll be able to get a demonstration at some point. I'm not too sure, but I feel like the angle that this is at is going to be quite hard. It's going to be quite hard to get it to come out as quick as you want it. Cause it's like nearly flat, but we'll see. We'll see. And then that just twist comes out there and that's sealed so we'll see so anyway let him get cracked on Super awkward. So I forgot to do the end. Oh, hey, oh. Sorry, a bit wobbling, then. oh yeah. yeah. We're on. So I forgot to end the video when it had made more sense. We're in the truck, which is alright if you're four foot five or whatever it is in here. So not ideal, but the car's got plenty of room, so that's alright. Got the TT spoiler brackets on, so this is pulling the spoiler quite a bit further out, giving us a little bit more adjustment on the angle. We still need to do the testing. We've got the gurney on and everything, but we need to do a testing at what's the best angle. We definitely know taking it off doesn't work, but before we do any more angle testing, we need to sort out that there's a little bit, bit of play in these, but we ain't got time to sort it before 
this test and we're definitely not going to have time to sort it before we're racing so we might as well just leave it as it is let's get cracked on there's a special guest going to be with us at testing as well so watch later to see